Welcome. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we're delighted that you've welcomed us into your home. Now, today, we want to hear from you. We're taking your questions from our viewing audience. So if you're watching during the live broadcast today, which is Monday only, give us a jingle at 1-800-221-9460. If you're calling and you're outside North America, you can reach us at area code 205-271-2980. You can always send us an email with your question to jimandjoy at EWTN.com. Or you can reach us on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash Jim and Joy Pinto. And today, yes. the theme for our beautiful show is going to be All Saints, All Souls, and the Communion of Saints, which is near and dear to okay. our hearts. So you have the phone number to call us. You're going to want to call as soon as possible and do it. 1-800-221-9460. This is the longest show in the world. So if you want to get on board with it and share with us, we want to hear from you. Enjoy. Before we get into our, our theme, we want to send our condolences and our prayers everybody here at ew10 is praying for those who've lost their lives in pittsburgh that uh tragic terrible attack on uh, our jewish brothers and sisters there at, at worship at a naming ceremony and uh, 11 uh killed uh, four police officers wounded mm -hmm. uh, i think there were another two people that were wounded and the whole nation is in grief we are praying we are united together to stand against this sort of evil against any person, any group, any race, any political persuasion, that we do not uh, attack one another, mm. kill one another. Mm -hmm. So we are, we are praying for those there in Pittsburgh and unite our prayers with so many others, praying for peace, comfort, hope for the families. Our theme again today is all saints, all souls in the communion of saints. So all, all uh, saints, Eve is coming up Wednesday, I believe that is, and Thursday is all saints day. And then we have all souls and the communion of saints. Mm. We want to hear from you about this and, and what you think about all of this or, or how you share about this or what people say about it when you talk about the communion of saints. Yeah. Your thought, I mean, I love, I'm growing in my understanding of communion, of a common union mm -hmm. with, with holy ones here on earth. We're trying to be holy ones. Our guest audience trying to be holy ones. Our um, staff and our crew is trying yeah. to be holy. Yes, they are. <laughs> and then, um, of course, we have... I call them those in transition, mm -hmm. those who might be going through purgation, a purging, a cleansing, to make sure that they can stand before the very presence of God. And those who've kind of already arrived, uh, who are cleansed, who are purified, who have died in a state of grace or have been purified mm -hmm. through pur purgation, and they're there with the Lord. And we have some that we've canonized as saints, so we can know that they're, we have saints there. And then we have those, many there, many, many there, I believe, that yes. are not canonized, but they're there. They were saints. And I love that scripture verse where it says, we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. The book of Hebrews. Right? Yeah. And so when you're doing your life and you feel alone and like nobody gets what you're doing and you just wonder, is God watching? It's so important to get that um, athletic arena event in your heart yeah. that you're running hard your race today. You know, we get up. We should be saying, gladly, Jesus, gladly. Whatever you want from me, I'm going to do it. And whatever I do today, Jesus, I want to do it with great excellence for you. Yeah. I, I want to give you my best, whether I'm at home, whether I'm, I'm cooking or cleaning or being your wife yeah. or being my children's mother or working at the pregnancy medical center. Whatever good God has us in, we want to do that well so we can hear the great cloud yeah. of witnesses yeah. cheering us on, just saying, don't give up. You're doing yeah. such a great job. Our time is coming. Uh, we will cross that finish line one way or another, whatever place we finish it in. And that, that Hebrews passage says, lay aside every, everything that clings to you and run with endurance the race that is set before mm. us. So all saints, all souls, encourage us. We can run this race. Yes. We can finish this race. And we will spend eternity with the Lord as we keep ourselves holy as he is holy. Call us 1-800-221-9460. Email us now. We want to hear from you. Join the conversation. What does all saints mean to you? All souls, what does it mean to you? And the communion of saints, how do you experience that? What stories do you have to share? We're here for you. You're at home with Jim and Joy. You're an important part of this EWTN family. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. Well, remember, we're taking your questions during our show today. So if you're watching the live broadcast right here on Monday, give us a jingle at 1-800-221-9460. If you're calling us and you're outside North America, you can reach us at area code 205-271-2980. And you can always send us an email with your question to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com or reach us on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash Jim and Let Joy. Let me just say Pinto. something here because we often hear from people, I'm trying to call, you need to call now <laughs> if you want to call. There's a lot of people that call in and your call needs to be uh, relevant to the themes of All Saints, All Souls, Communion of Saints, or even the tragedy that's just taken place in Pittsburgh. Yes, and we also want to remind you that this Saturday, November 3rd, is the EWTN Family Celebration. Here is some information, more information, so you can be sure to join us, and we will be there. My own conversion happened at an event, kind of like that family celebration. My parents dragged me against my will with this big conference. I didn't want to go, so I love course religious experiences for kids. Now, the first Christians called themselves the living ones. And when I saw the life in their eyes and their faces, I realized I was dead inside and I wanted what they, what they had. You know, lives still change at events like this. Meet Chris Stefanik and other EWTN favorites when you attend the 2018 EWTN Family Celebration, Saturday, November 3rd at the Prime Osborne Convention Center in Jacksonville, Florida. For more information, go to EWTN.com slash family celebration. There's still time to make your plans, especially if you're in Florida, you're in the Alabama Mobile area, um, South Carolina, especially you folks, you can get there for this great event. And also Friday, the day before, we have our media missionary gathering. I think that's at 7 p.m. at the same venue there. If you're a media missionary, we'd like to see you there Friday. The event is Saturday, but our media missionary gathering is Friday, okay? So, so it's gonna to be great. You. Well, I did want to talk about our communion of saints. You know, you used to be an Episcopal priest for 22 years yeah. before you reverted back to the Catholic Church. And in our liturgy, as we do in the Catholic Church, we would say that we believed in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the Apostles dead, Creed. and the life yeah. everlasting. So we said that as Episcopalians. And I was um, having this experience with the Blessed Mother, and I wasn't Catholic yet but I was having a difficult time with one of our four children. And- um, We'll remain nameless. <laughs> and my heart was broken and it was five mm -hmm. o'clock in the morning and I was praying and I really believe, I heard the Holy Spirit deep in my soul say to me, um, my mother can help you. My mother can help you. Now yes. I have no file for Mary. I know that she's Jesus's mom and I respected her, but I, I didn't <laughs> honor her as we do in the Catholic Church. And so um, that day I went to a Catholic priest down the road. I called him up and I said, hey, I need to talk to somebody. And, and he was so gracious and kind to me. And, and he said, now, Joy, um, as an Episcopalian, you believe in the communion of saints. And I said, yeah, I do, Father. And so he said, well, then why don't you just see Mary as a prayer partner in heaven? Because that's the communion of saints. You confess that every Sunday. And it like it changed yeah. a channel. It, first of all, it took down a prejudice that I had as Protestants. We don't really know where it comes from, but we protest Mary. That's what all that's about. It's, it's not from God, <laughs> but, but it's there. But it's the way Protestants are raised right. sometimes. Right, and so, um, so I, I let the veil down and I let the Blessed Mother be who she is. And, um, and it, cha it just changed my channel. I said, okay, I'm gonna call on Mary and I, I need a prayer partner because I need a mother in heaven. I need somebody who can hear my mother's heart that was breaking terribly over a situation. And um, I didn't become Catholic that day, but it was, the, it was a journey into our blessed mother and who she is. And, um, and it united me ever more fully with the communion of saints. It's beautiful testimony. And you know what, my problem didn't go away. My daughter was still in a mess, but I was comforted. I had peace in the midst of my storm. I still was in the storm, but God gave me grace and peace in the midst of it and led me through. That is a beautiful, beautiful sharing, and you're so in love with Our Lady. The Bible says there's only, this is an email, the Bible says there's only one mediator between God and man, Jesus. Why do Catholics ask Mary and the saints to pray and mediate for their lives 
and requests. This is Judy from Sandusky, Ohio. Thank you so much, Judy. Um, in a sense, you're asking me to mediate an answer, right? <laughs> so we ask people to do things regarding prayer or tell me more about the faith or give me an answer about something. That's mediation. So if Jesus is the, Jesus is the first and foremost only mediator in some particular sense regarding salvation. But he delegates mediation. He allows us to mediate things all the time. Or we couldn't have questions and answers or learn things because he's allowing other people to mediate truth. Mm. And so you're asking me to mediate an answer here, and I think that's the key, is that Jesus delegates mediation, especially to his, to his church, his body, the body of Christ, the body of Christ here on earth, that's people like us trying to live a holy life, and, and respond to the grace given to us. We're saved by grace, not by our works. We're saved by grace. But, but we are to reciprocate, and, and we are to do works if, if we're truly saved. Faith without works is dead. Um, so he allows us t to mediate. And so we ask people all the time to pray for us. Right. I, I, we ask our audience, please pray for us the whole time because right. we're here. And so we're always asking people to pray. And for us as Christian people, we understand that those who believe in the Lord will never die. They live. So we're about life. Mm -hmm. So we're living here. We're believing because of God's goodness and his mercy, our union with him, that we will live forever. Therefore, requesting things and asking yeah. prayers of people you know, don't stop. And so we can ask Our Lady for prayer. We can ask. I like to ask you know, people in my life who helped rear me, especially my Aunt Anna, who recently passed away, who was so big in my life, to continue to pray for me. Right. And so is she, is she in heaven? Is she going through purgation? I believe she's with the Lord in heaven, but maybe not. Then we have All Souls Day to, to pray for her purging, and I pray that if she needs that, that she be cleansed and purified, be there. But I'm thinking the big things in my aunt's life yes. who helped raise me after my mother's death on All Saints' Eve, mm -hmm. my mother died. Mm -hmm. I was five years old. She died. I used to hate Halloween because that was the day my mother died. Mm -hmm. but then I understood as I went along, hey, it's All Saints. My right. mom died on All Saints Eve, not Halloween, the mm -hmm. world Halloween. Anyway, I can go on and on. But yeah, it's so great to know the people are alive. They're not dead. Right. They're alive. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we can ask them. We can petition them for prayers. They don't take the place of Jesus, but we're all a part of the family here. Right. Well, we have Anne on the phone. Anne, welcome to At Home with Jim and Joy. Your question or your comment? I'm just calling. I just lost my son. And I buried him on Friday, and mm. two weeks before that, I had buried my mom and my mm. brother-in-law. <laughs> and it's <laughs> my son was already like dead when I got to the hospital. He died in the ambulance oh. of a massive heart attack. And mm. um, I prayed the chaplet at his bedside. <laughs> and uh, when the priest came, they didn't anoint him. I don't know why. But I guess because he was already dead, I didn't understand that. And then uh, we prayed, though. He, we put our hands, all of us, and we prayed together for his soul. Mm. And I, uh, I'm dying. <laughs> yes. Yes. I just, I just, I just want to know that my son's okay because his, I know, his family, like. They said, well, we're not religious, and then they mm. cremated him, and it was no mess, and mm. it was a beautiful memorial service. It was beautiful, but I'm so, I just mm. pray every minute, every minute of yeah. the day, I'm praying the yeah. rosary. I'm mm. just praying that he's in heaven with God. Amen. Yes, yes, Amen. yes. And thank you for the privilege mm. of hearing you, mm. of being in communion with you. And I want you to know, regarding the prayers that you're praying, that the word of God says, with sighs and groans too deep for words, the Holy Spirit interprets what we just heard from you. Sighs, groans, a mother's heart, pure love, hope, hurt. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is so beautiful. So know that those are your most powerful prayers that God hears. And that it do, I believe it does have benefit for your son. And probably the only one who loves your son more than you is Jesus. Mm. And so Jesus wants him to be eternally with him. How all this works out and everything, I, I don't know. Joyce says you put it in the mystery box. But your love is profound. We can hear that. I think of when Jesus visited Mary and Martha, and, and, and they were crying. Everybody was crying. And it says that Jesus snorted. Mm -hmm. And Jesus wept. He snorted. He mm -hmm. was angry at death 
because death is an intrusion. We're not supposed to die. But because of original sin and the fallout, we die. Mm-hmm. But that's not God's original plan, and God hates it. That's why he sent the Son. Anyway, my, our, our preaching, sharing with you, you know, there's no words. I think you should have hope. We all have hope. We don't know the end of the stories. God is totally in it with the entirety of his life that is given for your son. You can trust Christ and that God's hearing your prayers. And you can trust in the hope of eternal life. We count it a privilege. We'll be praying for you and for your son. Thank you, Ann. Mm, thank you, Ann. Now we have Tess on the phone. Tess, welcome to At Home with Jim and Joy. Your question or your comment? Hi. Um, good afternoon. Um, my question is if somebody dies and somebody tells you that person who dies is going straight to heaven and is a saint, is that true? Well, I, I guess it is true if that person's in a state of grace, <laughs> but we don't know that. But I know that there is, you know, a, a, a sense, especially in the uh, non-Catholic traditions, that when somebody dies, if they've prayed the sinner's prayer or they're baptized, then they're with the Lord. Um, and that's our hope, and it, that might very well be. But as St. Paul said, as he was being judged by various people, St. Paul said this, St. Paul, I don't even judge myself. It doesn't matter to you, it matter to me, if you judge me and say, I'm going to heaven or going to hell. But it is before God that finally I stand or I fall. And so, mm-hmm. you know, we could say this person was so holy and so righteous and so on. And we had a, we had a priest that was assassinated here a, a, in Birmingham years back. Holy, holy man. But when, when he was laid to rest, the, the bishop came and said, you know, we all know Father Coyle, holy man, righteous man. But only God knows everything. Mm-hmm. better than Father Coyle even knows himself. So let's pray for his soul. Father Coyle will have us pray for his soul. So we pray for our souls. I don't think we could saint people, right, right. although I have, you know, I feel like I have assurance about a number of my relatives who really got that they were there, but I don't know that. Right. So I think what we are is, we have a great reason to hope. He sent his son, God loves us, and if we're, you know, we're trying to live this out, but only God knows so that we could we say, you know, that is my hope of eternal life there. But maybe there is an all souls thing with this being purging and cleansing. Right. And, and so you can't say that to everybody who dies, that they're just there in, in heaven. We don't really know that unless they're canonized. Right. And the comfort is, is that we place them into the hands of the Lord. And this side of heaven, we pray for them yeah. and we offer masses for them, yeah. you know, that that we can participate in, in being a blessing in yeah. their in their yeah. journey. And so that's important to do. And also when we grieving like Anne and Tess, when we lose loved ones, that we have the comforter of the Holy Spirit to comfort our souls and to go to the Eucharist and to let Jesus come inside of us and heal our brokenness, that there would be more of him, of comfort and peace inside of us and less of anxiety. It doesn't mean that you don't miss them and you don't love them. Yes, you have grief and and hope deferred makes the heart sick. Mm. So we want to be hope filled in Christ. Let's take this final email. Is the communion of saints in the Apostles' Creed referring to Holy Communion? I don't think so, although it can be a part of it. Holy Communion is speaking about the theme of this show. Communion between the Holy Ones on earth, those baptized trying to walk in the way of Christ, those in process or in transition, those in purgatory, and those who are before the face of the Lord in, in heaven. Um, it's speaking about that holy communion, a union, speaking mm-hmm. about the ongoing family of God's people on the Christ as our head. One church on earth going through purging and in heaven. And again, there's only two final destinations. Right. Purgatory ain't a final destination. It's heaven or hell. Uh, and, and God has the final say on that. But purging is just making sure you're cleaned up right. We're saved by God's grace, but still there are things that we've done that contaminate us that need to be cleansed. All the time, I'm going out to various things, and I feel like I'm looking pretty good. And all of a sudden, you say, you got something in your hair. Mm-hmm. I go, oh, what are you doing? You got this, that. You might think you look good, but you know, might not look as good as you think. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and so it's kind of like, oh, what are you doing to me? And it's kind of like, well, you're not as clean as you think you are. I want to cleanse you. Mm. I want you to know my love so you can enjoy heaven for all eternity in the right way. Great conversation. Thank you for participating. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Don't go away.
Now, we're going to go to Rome to check in with Joan Lewis. Well, Joan, the Synod on the Youth has wrapped up. What were some of the concluding events? I think most of you know that it was a very busy weekend here at the Vatican, closing the 25-day Synod on Young People. Saturday was the final general congregation, voting on the final document made public that night. And then Sunday, Mass in St. Peter's Basilica, presided over by Pope Francis. After Mass, he went up to his private study, and speaking to the crowd, a gathered uh, in the square, I might say rain-drenched crowd, um, he recited the Angelus, but in particular, the Pope expressed his closeness to the people of Pittsburgh. He said, in particular, to the Jewish community, hit yesterday by a terrible attack in the synagogue. May the Lord help us to extinguish the outbreaks of hatred that develop in our societies, strengthening the sense of humanity, respect for life, moral, and civil values. And he said, may we also increase the holy fear of God, who is love and the father of all. I th and I think you know that the attack killed 11. Now, all was at the Angelus, speaking of the Synod, the just uh, concluded Synod, the Pope called it a time of consolation and hope. He said, precisely through demanding and often very tiring work. First of all, it was a moment of listening. And the Pope said, listening requires time, it requires attention, it requires openness of mind and heart. But this commitment, he said, was transformed every day into consolation because of the lively and stimulating presence of young people with their stories and their contributions. And then, by the way, at the end of Mass, a letter from the Synod Fathers to young people had been read. Now, the Pope then spoke of the fruits of the Synod. He said, the fruits are already fermenting, as does the grape juice in the barrels after the harvest. And he said, the Youth Synod was a good harvest and it promises good wine. But I'd like to say that the first fruit of the Synod should be precisely in the example of a method that we've tried to follow right from the very beginning. And he said that is to say, a way of being and working together, young and old, listening and discernment to reach the pastoral choices that respond to reality. So great words from the Pope on the Synod, but time's up here. Back to you all. Thank you, Joan. Thanks so much, Joan. Thanks for bringing us up to date on everything going on there at Rome, and it's great to hear the words of the Holy Father, words of comfort. Great to know that our bishops are assembling, seeking God's face and his will for the church everywhere. Joy, let's take this email. It says that in Southwest Florida, Mass yesterday, a man came down the aisle screaming at the priest. It was very scary. The, poli the police were told to be at all places of worship, and they were there, and they got him, and this is from Cheryl. Yeah. So it is scary. It is the climate. They did warn people in all places of worship, in mosques and in churches and synagogues. I mean, this is just where we find ourselves, where we should be in a places of a sanctuary, where it should be safe and separated from the world. Yeah. Um, this is... Well, now is the time to be wise as a serpent and as gentle as a dove. Now is the time to intercede and pray. Every day we pray for renewal in the church. We need renewal and we pray for divine awakening and, and may God gives us signs and wonders and convert mm -hmm. these people that are thinking about doing evil before it's ever done. It's been an absolute delight to be with you today and thank you especially for your call and sharing your grief with us here at EWTN and throughout the world. We are united together. You're never alone and we always have the hope of eternal life. Be sure to join us on Wednesday when our guest will be Mrs. Allison Palfi. She will be discussing a program uh, regarding Catholic schools that can use to help their students and with special needs. It's an amazing work yes, that she's done. it is. Immaculate Conception School in... Savannah, Georgia. Augusta, Georgia. Augusta, Georgia. Georgia. Yeah. So remember, you're an important part of this family. You're always at home with Jim and Joy. Please write us, email us during the week, and we'll keep in communion that way as well as prayer. Keep it on EWTN. Bye now.